winner is the bird's nest in cactus. I'm going to do this painting as a series of videos so you can follow along. You don't have to wait forever for the whole completed one. You can kind of watch as I go then. So if you haven't already subscribed and you want to keep on watching these and be notified, subscribe and hit that bell for the notifications. And then every time there's a new video, you'll be notified. And my first step in painting, I'm putting the gesso on the canvas. I just squirted it all on it and I'm spreading it out evenly now. It'll take a bit to get this in a nice smooth coat. I'll probably put two coats on here. I'm trying to brush out any of the strokes. And then I'll do a light sanding in between coats. And once in a while you find a little spot of crumbs or something. This gesso got kind of old. It might have a few lumps in it. It's just some, um, this is Bob Ross gesso. <laughs> you can get gesso from any art supplies place. It's G-E-S-S-O. Any brand will do you. It's, you don't have to be real particular. But you want that coat on your canvas so that the paint adheres really well. It's, if you're putting all that work into a painting, you want it to last a long time. Archival quality. I use really good paints when I do canvas paintings. I like the Golden brand a lot. Most of my good paints are in here. Fluid acrylics come in two different sizes. You've got a ounce, one ounce, or the real common colors that you use. These are four ounce. This is the golden brand, and these are the fluid ones. Not the same as, uh, you might be able to use them for paint pouring projects. But I like the golden brand, and I like the fluid ones. So I use, I buy these for my paintings. I do have some older paints that I started out with in the tubes. And there's still some colors I'll use in there. You can just dilute them with water or with the gel. I'll show you that too. Acrylic glazing liquid. That works well. That's a golden brand also. That works well to thin your paints with. Or this is a Liquitex retardant, which slows down the drying process. I'm in Arizona especially, the Mr. Bottles of water, just water. That comes in handy. You can actually spray as you paint. There's a trip. <laughs> you can buy palettes to use that will stay wet that have a cover on them, but this Tupperware container works just as well. And if you buy these little thin sponges, usually you can find them like at a dollar store in a package of several. Just cut it to the size that fits in your container. They expand a little when they're wet. Get that wet. Use palette paper. And that can be cut to the size of your container too, which these aren't yet. And then as I paint, I use quite a few of these during a painting because I'll start, it starts to get pretty messy. <laughs> I used a foam brush for the gesso and when that's dry I'll sand it and put on another coat and if there's brush strokes then I'll can sand it a little more before I start painting. Next step will be transferring or sketching out the drawing onto the canvas. Now this one's a slightly different format. Mine is 20 by 24, so it's a little more square than the proportions of this one. So I will crop this. We are going to transfer the drawing onto the canvas. 
using a grid. If you can get a hold of some white mylar film, they'll sell this at most craft stores as a stencil material that you can hand cut stencils. But this works really well because I can fit it right over my drawing. And I'll just clip it on there for now. These are done in one inch squares. And this came out to be eight squares. And so the halfway point is there. So knowing that was eight squares, and I've trimmed this paper down already, I just cropped it using a little cutter thing that helps you get it cut straight. And then I measured out, I found my center point first, knowing this was 20 inches across, so I had 10 inches. I did five, and then I divided each five into two and a half. And that gave me the eight across. And so I did the same size squares, they're, they're two and a half inch square on this canvas. It may come out differently depending on your canvas size, so don't go by that measurement. You just want to find your center point and you want to divide it into squares so that you can fit the proportional fit of the picture on there. So knowing that and that I wanted squares, I just did the same size down the side. And I came out with nine and a little more than a half square squares. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it's just slightly over half of a square. So on this, I had gone down and found my nine and a half. And I trimmed down the photo. I took a little off the top and a little off the bottom until I got it how I wanted it situated on the painting. Because I didn't want to just take it off all off the bottom or all, all off the top because I didn't want to get too close to the nest. I kind of wanted to keep the nest in that area. Otherwise it would throw off where that nest is and that's kind of a focal point. So you've got to consider a lot of things before you decide exactly how you're going to crop that down. So now that I know my, I've just got little tiny marks on here, but I can use a straight edge. And each square on here, you can see like the edge of this cactus in this square. So each little square you're going to duplicate on here and everything. It's almost like a puzzle piece. So you'll just go square by square and getting some of your, you just need your basic lines in there because a lot of the work is going to be done in paint. Now, depending on what you're painting, I'm sorry if the light's a little bad. I've got my grow lights right over here. I get to look at plants while I do this. Um, you kind of have to decide if you're going to do like a solid background color or what you're going to do before you put your details on the canvas because I think I'll do like a little bit of a shaded background. I'll get some of the values in there of the dark areas and stuff and keep some lighter spots. So I need kind of a guideline, but I can be very blurry and vague with what I'm doing there. But that way I'll have paint on the whole canvas, not a heavy coat. It's just going to be like a light wash. And then I can go back and start penciling in some details. And when you pencil in and then you paint, a lot of times once you get it a little bit started, you can erase your pencil marks if you're just having a light bit of paint on there. Now, if you're really good at sketching, just eyeballing it, or depending on what, what your work is, what your subject matter is going to be, you might be able to just hand sketch that on there. I am not trusting myself. I always like to really get the proportions right. I've done that before and been a little bit off. And you, know, you could do the whole painting and then realize later somebody might point it out to you that you're just a little bit off or a little bit crooked line here or there. So 
that stuff's important to get things where you want them to be if it's got to be really accurate. Um, I do have some leeways with this organic type of painting like that. There's not like a straight lines or anything. Um, the other way of transferring your image, I do have a projector. You can put in just a tiny picture in the projector and you can project it onto your canvas so I could have it set up and have my canvas up against the wall and trace with a pencil where things are. It'll project the image on that. You need to do that in a dark room. So I wouldn't be able to show you that anyway. It'd be kind of hard to catch on video. I'm starting with a little bit of the highlight yellow color that there's a lot of yellow in the background. Now I will be putting lots of layers of paint over this but this just gives me a little bit of brightness to work with. So I can just look at where most of the yellow is and count my squares across and down and do that on the canvas too. So I can just figure out by looking at the squares, the whereabouts of where yellow is going. And it's bright right now, but that's okay. It's going to be toned down a whole lot more. So. Pour over. That's about across from here. What I'm doing here is just laying the ruler where the grid line would be and then I can hold a piece of paper where the grid line is on there. And by comparing that, I can pretty much get these little cactus fruits where they belong. The other ones I can imagine where half the lines are, but this helps get it pretty accurate. So I'm basically sketching it out with the paint. I won't end up with too many pencil marks to get rid of. I even got the shapes of some of the edges here. Some of the bumps on the fruit. So that one. This design is a pretty forgiving one. So I just find my marks across. Do the same here. Yeah, when you're looking at something artistically, you can you kind of have to pick out colors you might that are there, but you can exaggerate them a little bit more. There's a lot of peachiness in some of these, a lot of purpley grays, and a lot of times you'll see a little purpley color to cactuses, so yeah, purple. <laughs> it might look weird at first, but there'll be so much color going on over it, it'll work in the end. All right, thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching. And I hope you'll follow along. This is Cindy from BOCI Creative Living saying bye for now.